Hello there, potential parents with possibly gay kids. Well, is figuring out whether you support gay equality or are kind of against it or just accepting gay people in general, you might wonder, is homosexuality even natural? I mean, if homosexuality was natural, then why do we have a pointy object and we have a hole? Well, let's explore this a little bit. Dictionary.com, I will link below, defines the word natural to be existing in or formed of nature. So, if something existed in or was formed of nature, other, we'd be able to see it in other animals, right? Well, we can. And we have. I will link below a couple of studies. Basically, homosexuality has been seen in all other animals. Well, or at least roughly over 200. From birds to cats to, uh, to all types of mammals to even reptiles, we've seen homosexual behavior. And this includes actual mating um, and courtship. Sometimes this is used for dominance displays. Some of this is just general community bonding. But it makes you think. You know, another idea of if homosexuality is natural, we'd probably be able to find some kind of a genetic component. And unfortunately, it might burst your bubble, but we do not have a gay gene. But using studies of monozygotic twins, twins that came from that were originally one egg that split into two separate eggs, so they have the same DNA, we have found a significant number of those twins, if one is gay, the other will be gay. Which, that would not happen if there was not a genetic component. They even did a couple of studies where the twins were raised in completely separate environments to rule out any environmental variables. These two individuals still happen to be gay. So, well, you know, with seeing it in other animals, a bio, some kind of a genetic component, no matter how slight it is, well, you got to think of what else? Thinking. The hardwiring of the brain. I mean, is the homosexual brain actually different from the heterosexual brain? Well, as it turns out, it is. Back in 1992, a researcher did a double-blind study of the brains of both heterosexual men and homosexual men, both self-identified. And this researcher, when he was going through the slides of these brains, didn't know which one belonged to a self-identified heterosexual and which identified to and which brain slice was that of a self-identified homosexual. He was this researcher kept himself completely out of the loop of this process. But as he went through and looked at all these slides, he was able to find a group of cells in the gay male brain that was different than that of the heterosexual brain. As it turns out, all those brains whom he identified as homosexual actually were. But hey, this is 2010. Don't we have anything more than just a couple of sliced up brains? We do. Um, in the mid-2000s, some researchers did MRI studies brain imaging studies that actually showed a gay female's brain reacts like a heterosexual male's brain when posed with female stimulus. Similar regions in their brain light up. And the same with a gay male brain as opposed to a heterosexual female's brain. Both of them lit up in the same areas when posed with a male stimulus. So we have Zo we have zoology, homosexuality and other animals. We have a twin study supporting genetics. We have brain studies supporting the idea that homosexuality is hardwired. What was the other research? Well, one of those research happened to be one of those areas of research happened to be birth order. Strangely enough, if a man has many older brothers, he's more likely to be gay. But it's not because the mother babies him. It's actually because the mother's body has gotten a lot better at fighting off the male chromosome, hence effeminizing the fetus. If a man has older brothers, that means that older, older brothers conceived from the same mother. 
That means that mother's body has gotten a whole lot more time to practice at fighting off the Y chromosome because the Y chromosome is completely foreign to the female's body. And so the more older brothers a young man ha or an individual has, the more likely he is to have been born in a mother's or be raised in a mother's uterus, be developed in a mother's uterus, um, that has actually been better equipped, has learned how to fight the male chromosome. So it effeminizes the fetus, hence making the youngest boy gay. And last but certainly not least, I'm throwing this in there, you might find it a little odd, but it's a study about mice and, um, and deleting certain chromosomes and how chemicals in the prenatal environment affect the actual development of the brain. Um, the last study that I'm linking below, all the studies are actually linked below, in this study, they actually deleted a gene from a, from a mouse. Um, and as it turns out, by deleting this gene, that gene wasn't there to produce a counter en enzyme um, to help stop this other enzyme from affecting the fetus's brain. This other enzyme actually highly masculinized the fetal mouse's brain. And so when the mouse was born, it turned out a little bit bigger than that of other female mice and attempted to mate with other female mice. I bring this up because actually human DNA is relatively close to mouse DNA. Our brain structures are relatively the same. Which even if you don't believe in evolution and you look at this study, it does make you think. It does make you wonder what might be going on in the brains of homosexuals or what might be going on in the brains of heterosexuals to cause these different behaviors. So these are just some of the major studies out there when it comes to sexual orientation in biology. Even if you don't necessarily feel comfortable with your own kid being gay, you gotta wonder, did somewhere along the line they get a, they get a block of chromosomes or a block of DNA that might in, that might make it easier for them to be gay rather than to be straight? Or do they actually have a gay brain rather than a straight brain? Too bad and too bad we don't actually have a test for that yet. But in the next 20 years, maybe we might. Maybe you might be able to walk in, get an MRI of your brain, and find out that you literally do have a gay brain. Wouldn't that be cool? That might also be quite scary, though. But you know, as always, be open to listening. Be open to accepting. And no matter what, it's still your child and you love them, right? Peace out.